Hi, my name is Michael Trout, and I'm here in Japan making this talk for you to put on your radar a new paradigm for the startup called the Open Startup. The Open Startup is simple. We want to create a ubiquitous startup ecosystem for global entrepreneurs. It is a, it's a problem that I spent the last two years working, and I've developed something called the Open Incubator Framework, OIF, and ultimately my vision, similar to Jobs, is this is I want to make being an entrepreneur fun. Because right now, being an entrepreneur is a hellish experience. It's not fun. Coming up with the ideas is fun, right? Coming up with uh, ideas to solve problems, but then implementing and moving that idea along the current market is extremely hard. And if, if we were to start our discussion, we need to define a startup. A startup, which is one of the hardest things to define, and it took me over a year to come up with this, what I realized is it's broken up into three stages, and that's why it's so hard. The pre-seed include ideas. And really what defines a startup is how much money you have access, because success equals money plus the team plus the right market conditions. The problem is innovators, which make up less than 2.5% of the population, create new markets. So we can't, you know, we're creating the market. So... What happens is seed investors don't want to put money in us because they don't see the market. And I'll talk about that. So ultimately, what we're doing is we're simplifying and removing that middle stage. The startup is from the idea to the private placement. Okay, That's what we're doing with the open startup. And our platform basically provides that roadmap. So there are three significant bottlenecks that I'm going to address called the talent, the funding, and the developing. So the talent, and each of these are, I could spend an hour on each of these, but I'm just going to cover one part of each of them. The first part that stops innovation is basically, as I would put it, access or unreasonable expectations of the, of the, of the innovator, right, or of the entrepreneur. Case in point. In a recent Steve, uh, Dave Rose uh, presentation on TEDx, he talks about what a founder should have. All these skills, right? Makes up a founder. I mean, who has all these skills? I mean, realistically thinking, look at yourself, you know, ask yourself. Well, I looked at a whole bunch of founders from Bill Gates to Steve Jobs to, um, you know, to uh, you name it, right? There's a whole bunch, and I can't think of all their names right now. But ultimately, if we look at Steve Jobs, you know, the ones that you could say he had is passion, commitment, vision, and coachability, right? And ultimately, he became the man he is today because of it. If we were to be able to supplement those skills by removing the talent bottleneck and not putting all the responsibility on one founder, by spreading that responsibility, then we can actually eliminate this bottleneck. So, the second p bottleneck is funding, and obviously, talent deals with talent acquisition, talent management, and everything else. That you know that that you know that is part of, of of the problem. The key thing here to realize is that basically, funding brings about the talent or the missing the the, the holes that you that you have to fill, right? And again. Money also can bring about the right market conditions. For example, the fax machine has been around over 100 years, and yet it only came about 30 years ago, right? It was invented in the 1900s. And uh, the, you know, the steam engine was invented in the 1400s, and basically the market conditions didn't happen until you know, the, the 1700s because the money, the investments weren't there for that. Um, ultimately, as an entrepreneur, our vision is this, is to solve problems, Okay. And to bring about the innovations that's going to make the world a better place. The challenge is that the current model puts such barriers, and the business plan is another great example of barrier in place, that we can't bring about our innovation. And so innovation is stifled. As a result of the innovation is stifled, both society is hurt and also the entrepreneur. Because here's a prime example. Private equity has put so this huge responsibility on business plans. And if you take this is just the United States from when I interviewed Adele uh, Resi from the largest closed incubator in the world, the Founders Institute. And um, this is pretty telling, isn't it? The other problem with funding is this, is that innovators, and this is the from the law of 
um, it, uh, the law of diffusion of innovation, we know that 2.5% of the population are innovators. Okay, Innovators create new markets, as I mentioned before. The problem is we could probably apply this law to investors. So we could probably say less than 2.5% of global investors in, invest in innovate, innovation. Okay. Now, the problem here is this, is that if you look at, like, for example, AngelList, which has 3,000 angel investors, that means there's like 60 investors of 3,000 that you have to target. Now, the other problem is, you know, from angel investors, they invest in what they know and who they know, which makes basically, as an innovator, it, it makes it pretty much impossible as an innovator without the right reach or contacts to find your right network. So, the problem that we have to overcome is this whole success equals money with the right people and the right market conditions. Now, the opportunity here is to overcome it with something called micro seed crowdfunding. Micro seed crowdfunding is going to be the way that we can basically flatten the money issue that faces most innovators, right? And ultimately, there are three bills now in the U.S. Senate. There is legal crowdfunding now in, in Europe. It's just getting going, and it's going to be a massive transformative solution for us. The final bottleneck that faces the, the innovator, okay, the entrepreneur, is developing. Like Steve Jobs, like myself, most innovators don't want to create a company for their innovation. We have to create a company because no one else will give us an opportunity to launch our ideas without doing so, right? The other thing is that the Lean Startup is a developer solution. It was invent created by a developer. For us to raise money, we need something called a prototype, right? And also, if we look at developers, they're the ones who get all the money, as I mentioned before, whether it's Bill Gates, whether it's, um, you know, um, Mark Zuckerberg or Steve Jobs or the Google guys, they're all developers, right? Uh, even Sun, even Michael Dell, he's a, you could even call him, he's not a developer, he's part of technology. He, was, he assembled computers, right? So ultimately, what we need to do is overcome the current model, which, which is I have an idea, I have to pay to develop or have some of my team develop a prototype to possibly get funding. The other problem here is IP. The moment you put prototypes online, the idea is the only valuable item uh, when you can hire a developer, a PHP developer for under $10 an hour in India, basically you're giving away your idea, right? So the current model, the new model, the open startup paradigm is you have an idea, you launch it in a closed network, you develop something called a soft proto, which I'll talk about a little bit, right? Ultimately, there's no coding involved. It secures some base level funding that then secures IP that then you can secure, build your prototype, and, and, and secure more funding. It becomes a cycle for uh, the non-developer entrepreneur, like myself and like many of others out, out there. So our goal is simply to put it, you know, as, as, as is, is, is to really provide a platform, a solution that's going to usher in more Steve Job type of innovators. We want to make the world a better place. Let me give you a glimpse of the open startup, our ubiquitous startup ecosystem for global entrepreneurs, right? And ultimately, this is dumbed down because of IP and other things, but I'm going to give you the basic overview, right? So you have an idea. The first thing you want to do is validate. We have a, a, an entire validation system through OIF. If it doesn't validate, it doesn't cost you any money or anything else, guess what? You can put another idea. Put up as many ideas as you want. If it does validate, guess what? Boom! Automatically, you start forming a team. Automatically. Not only that, automatically, it's going to start to fund itself. Wow. Automatically. What I call passive crowdfunding. Passive. Using gamification, other cool things. Now you've got team. Now you have funds. Now you have funds. What do you do with funds? You secure IP, right? You secure some intellectual property, the trademark, and so on, in order for you to what? Secure more funds. That's going to allow your team now to start developing, Right? So the soft proto is developed, more funds is created, and then ultimately it launches as a private placement as a seeded startup. Now imagine us doing this with basically a million ideas at no cost, with free crowdfunding, right? And what's really exciting about our system is you can come in at any level. You can come in as 
the idea, you can come in as a funder, you can come as a talent, you can come as, a, as, as part of the development, right? So it's ubiquitous. This is a ubiquitous solution for entrepreneurs.